coming to the US to go to college and just being shocked by how little people knew of my world. I mean, I just thought that it was very strange that in um, 1997, people would ask me, do you have houses in Nigeria? <laughs> and I just, I was, I was stunned by that, you know. And in some ways, when you're outside of the US and America has such cultural power right, that right. we're all familiar in some ways with right. America, so we watch the films, we listen to the music. And in some ways, you stupidly assume that mm. America also has a sense of you. Right. And then I came here and I just was shocked by that. Yeah. But it also made me think about how, in some ways, we're all, as human beings, um, potentially guilty of having mm -hmm. a single story about other people. Yeah. Yeah. So, so while I was upset that they knew very little about where I had come from, um, I went to Mexico and I realized, my goodness, I'm doing the same thing right. that Americans right. did to me. Because in Mexico, I thought, right. my God, they're normal, they're happy, they're laughing. <laughs> because I had been in this country where the constant coverage of Mexicans was so negative and so one-sided. The appeal of Donald Trump. Um, I, I just do not understand it. And I think... You know, the, we're talking about, oh, who's going to win um, the elections in this country? And, and it seems to me that there is a kind of almost willful um, disregard of the fact that there's a person who I think is dangerous for this country, who has enormous support in certain parts of this country. And we should ask, I think we should ask why. why? I want to understand it, and I don't. So that bewilders me. Um, I think also this idea of, you know, the, the tribal um, orthodoxies, you know, that there's certain things you're not supposed to say. I think in this country now, if somebody on the right agrees with something, there are many people on the left who feel compelled to immediately disagree with right, it right. and not think about the content of it. Right, right. So this kind of tribal thinking, mm -hmm. um, which I think shuts down thought. Mm. You know, we're not thinking critically. Mm -hmm. So someone on the right approves of this, I don't approve of it because I'm on the left. And I think also the reverse is the case. Yeah. And I find that bewildering on so many levels because we, what it means is that we can't even talk about, you know, I want to talk about the content of things. I right. want to be able to, um, you know, decide for myself whether mm. something is good or bad and, and not have it be linked to whether my tribe right. approves of it. Right. And I think it's getting worse and worse. And so, which is the reason why I'm increasingly bored with political discourse in this country, mm. because I can see someone on TV or read a piece in a newspaper, and I kind of know what their position is mm -hmm. on anything. Mm -hmm. um, and, and often it's very tribally correct, yeah. which may not necessarily be <laughs> intellectually correct. Right. <laughs> you know? right. right. So that bewilders me. Um, but this is also a country, you know, this is, America is my second home. I, and there's a kind of, you know, in the way that you worry when you see something you care about starting to crumble. Mm. That's the feeling I have about mm. the US mm. right now. Young people, and not just young people, really, everyone, people who are on social media, there's an expectation that you will not get compassion. And so... You know, you, you tweet something and then people are coming at you, even your friends who know that you, who, and, and that, that idea that whatever you say has the most uncharitable, mm -hmm. um, that people will read it in the most uncharitable way. Mm. I think it makes people hold back. Mm. And then, of course, the moral courage part of it is that there are people who could speak up and they don't. Yeah. I think what's happening now in the sort of, you know, the books that are not being published, the, you know, you open the newspapers and often there's someone who's been dropped from something. It's often not because those in positions of authority really believe that what has been said was bad. It's because mm. they're afraid. Mm. They're afraid of themselves being attacked. And that's what I mean by moral courage, that mix of compassion and moral courage. Yeah. And what it does for people who, who are creative is it makes you um, it makes you turn in wards. Yeah. You know, you're no longer willing to. I think creativity also requires a kind of risk taking. Mm. You know, you have to be able to um, to go outside of what is comfortable for you. I think that's where great art comes from. Right. Even in the in the small space of a workshop, I constantly have to say to people, it's okay, right? You can actually if you can actually write that. Mm. You know, it's okay because you can see that. They're already worried about what the people in the workshop are going to think. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a, I remember this young man who wrote a story about a man who 
um, is objective, who sees a young woman and he just completely objectifies her. So he writes the story and he reads a bit of it and then the other people in the workshop just come for him. Mm. And they're like, oh my God, you're sexist, you're misogynist. And then this poor guy says, no, I don't agree with the character. I don't agree with the character. And you know, it just made me think we can't even read anymore. Yeah. I mean, this idea that we immediately, the assumption is somehow that he is condoning mm. what the character does. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a problem, right? right. It's, so in terms of tribes, I am on the left. You know, right. I, I, think that, I think that the political left makes more sense and mm -hmm. is more humane in general. But I also think that there's so many problems now with the left. So we can talk about the right and the kind of crazy book banning, the book yeah. banning well, that are ask happening. I was going to because your own book was, was apparently was banned. Uh, yeah, and I don't know why. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I thought I mean, such a ghost company, though. I mean, look at all the wonderful books that yeah. have been banned. <laughs> but but that that's just really bad because you're you're depriving children mm -hmm. of of knowledge and of, of pleasure, yeah. because books bring yeah. pleasure. And you know, on the right as well, all of this talk about, which I find just personally abhorrent, this decision to hide the mm. truth of history. Mm. And so in the name of stupid ideas like CRT, they're not allowing children know the history of America. Mm. You know, I think that African-American history is essential. It is American history. And the truth has to be told. And somehow this idea that you want to protect children mm. from not feeling bad, yeah about the truth is absurd, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I, was also, I was also thinking about, you know, often on the right you hear when they want to uh, make fun of people on the left, they say, well, facts don't care about your feelings. Yeah. Actually, we should be saying that to people on the right who want to, who want to um, hide the truth of African-American history. Right. You know? And, and I came, obviously, from, from Nigeria to go to college, and I didn't really know very much about African-American history. And I, mm -hmm. and I, because I was curious and I wanted to understand, started reading African-American mm -hmm. history. Um, I feel that I'm a bit of an expert now, self-styled. Mm -hmm. self but, but for me, really, it was a story of such wonderful grace and grit, right. not just about, you know, the horrors. And I think young Americans should know that. You know, mm -hmm. they should know that. They deserve to. But on the left... It bothers me that my own tribe, um, you know, it's easy for us to criticize people who are banning books, but what are we saying to ourselves about the self-censorship that we are promoting right. and about the way that we attack our own so viciously, mm -hmm. right? We, we, there's a sense in which on the left, it's so easy to fall short of expectations, it's so easy. You know, there's a kind of, I mean, what I said about out-angeling um, one another, we're now supposed to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that kind of puritanism. You're, you're not even supposed to, you're supposed to know everything, right? Um, you're supposed to know the right language to use. You're mm -hmm. supposed to know, and you're not, you're not expected to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And if you do ask, I mean, I, I'll, I'll tell you this about when I was in, um, I was speaking to some students and I won't tell you where, but you know, we're talking about things and suddenly I stop and I ask them, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, these, there's, there's this ascendancy of buzzwords. We throw things around. And so I said to them, explain it to me as if I were in kindergarten. Mm. And they couldn't. Mm. There's a kind of, so we, we, we throw these things out and we expect everyone to know them. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think on the left, and again, of course I care more about the left because it's, you know, it's kind of where I feel more comfortable. And it's not that I'm being a scold. I'm hoping that what I'm doing is saying what a lot of people on the left are thinking. I see. Yeah? I see. Just give people a bit more room. Right. Um, maybe, maybe be more charitable. When somebody says something, don't immediately, sort of don't immediately interpret it to mean the worst possible thing. Mm -hmm. if, we, if more of us did that, maybe the tone on social media would change a bit. Maybe the literature we produce would be a bit more, um, would be a bit less narrow. You know, I don't really find contemporary fiction very interesting yeah, anymore. I was right. And I read this book and everyone was good and everyone was ideologically correct. Mm. Everyone had all the right opinions. Right. And I thought I that is- I think we call that propaganda, no? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not literature. You know, it's, it's and, and, and you can see that the people are not real people. I mean, I, I love this expression, um, 
um, H.G. Wells, that, that literature should be about the jolly coarseness of life. Mm. And to that, I like to say it doesn't have to be jolly. I mean, we live in a world now where people talk about sensitivity readers. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you were a writer, you don't want your publisher to have to get a sensitivity reader for your book. Right. So you're going to do the sensitivity right. writing yourself. yourself. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, but also, I think that humor as a, as a, as a device in storytelling mm -hmm. is so important because, right. because we can use humor to talk about things that really matter. Mm -hmm. And humor is universal. And so when people are laughing, but they're also sort of taking something in. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing about the, pro the progressive left, um, my tribe. We've lost the ability to laugh. We, and I think storytellers are essential for, for every society. If we don't have our story storytellers feeling free enough to tell mm -hmm. our stories, we're losing something, and then the generations who will come after us, I right. think they're going to just be startled. Right. You know, we look back and we read, we read Dickens, and we, you know, I read Balzac, and I'm, I'm, I get a sense of what life was like then. I worry that, I wonder if people reading contemporary writing mm. today will get a true sense of what our lives are like. Right, right. And so I'm going to, no, I, and I'll tell you this without naming names, but um, I had been you know, asked to do an interview the very respected uh, media outfit in America. And um, a few days before the interview, my, um, my publisher tells me, oh, I'm so sorry, they just said you can't, they cannot go forward with the interview. Mm. And I said, oh, why? And they said, well, because they think that they cannot interview you if you're not willing to address the comments you made in 2017 about trans women. Trans women yeah. And I was so stunned by that. Mm. I thought, well, I wrote a children's book. Yeah. And I think what stunned me even more was the willingness of this media organization to be open about the reason that they were canceling the interview. Right. I mean, usually people, if people felt that there was something maybe not so um, admirable about their reasons, they would kind of hide them, right? Mm -hmm. They might say, oh, the producer is unwell. Mm -hmm. But they said that, and it made me think. I mean, I, you know, I was stunned, and I have to say I was kind of hurt. Mm -hmm. But also it made me start to understand how certain people can um, choose not to speak out. And by this I mean, in the past I would sometimes say, look, you know, there's some people who are so successful. You know, can you just say these things publicly? There are people who would write to me and say, you know, I really agree, there's so much censorship, but they will not say it publicly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I will think a little bit judgmentally, I'd be like, well, you're very successful, why don't you say it publicly? But when this happened, my first thought was, oh, this book that I love mm. will not get to find readers. Right. And so it made me start to understand that human impulse, it's not that we, it's not even about wanting money, or it's, it's that you've created something that you really want the world to see. Right. And the possibility that you might be denied that makes you hold back. Yeah. I grew up in a culture in which because I'm a woman, I cannot inherit property, all of those things. So it's shaped so much of my life. And I said that not at all thinking that I was right. causing offense at all, right. not intending to cause offense. But I also understand that it's possible to cause offense without meaning to, right? Yeah. It is. Um, but, but, you know, I, I didn't. And so afterwards, I was so taken aback Mm -hmm. by, you know, there were, you know, people wrote to people. I mean, it was just really horrible. I took mm -hmm. to my bed for two weeks. Mm -hmm. But what, and I, I don't like to talk about it because I don't like to cast myself as a victim. There's a kind of, there's almost, it's almost impossible to talk about this with nuance without being accused either, of, oh, you're making yourself the victim or, oh, you're so insensitive kind of. I, I remember thinking, but why would anybody think that I meant harm? Because people said, well, you're creating a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. um, people said you're a murderer. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I sort of, my whole life has been about the celebration and the embrace of diversity and sort of, right. you know, I love the idea that we are different in the world. And, and I think my walk speaks for myself, you know, for itself and, and the, the things, positions I've taken. And so it made me start to realize how, again, that idea of compassion, that idea of a kind of narrowing, a very, mm. very vicious narrowing mm. of um, just how one is supposed to be, right? right? Mm. And, and I also, you know, I got a lot of flowers from people during that period. Mm. It was almost as though somebody had died. No, seriously. <laughs> I'm a king, yes, I'm a king, I think I'm a king,